Hey guys, my name is Mike Carter and today I'm going to show you how to use the dollar sign in Excel to create mixed cell references and absolute cell references. This symbol in Excel will help you save both time and money. That's coming up. Alright, so here's the three different reference cells. So the, we could use a relative cell, which is just a simple reference cell. So, for example, if I wanted to put the reference, the number in A2, in this D6 column, in this D6 cell, I would just use it as a A2. It's just simple A2. Press Enter, 10. And what's nice about that is if I change this number, this number changes. So if I want to reference um, D6, if I want to reference A2 to D6, that's how I do it. So again, if I want to reference uh, B2 to A6. And we've probably done this before if you're fairly familiar with Excel. So this is a simple relative reference, or uh, just a normal cell reference. So uh, I'll do the same thing with D7. I'll reference A3. And in E7, I want to reference B3. So I just type in equals B3, and it's the same number. All right? so this table should be the same as this table. Now. To do a mixed cell reference, it's sort of like a multiplication table, and it's also a good way to um, develop, figure out interest on a loan, and I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial, but let's say we have this multiplication table, so here's how we do a mixed cell reference. So okay, so we got our formula, um, we'll do this one, B2 times A3. It should work, right? Okay, so 1 times 1 is 1, good. So now we'll just copy and paste this formula over to the next one. It should work, right? And it worked for this one, but whoa, what happened here? So um, what the what Excel thought you should do, because we didn't put a mixed cell reference in, is it did, so it took B2 to A3, so these two. And then what you wanted it to do was actually, when you go over here, still times it by one. And then when you go over here, it still times it by one, right? So you wanted to keep this cell and then keep moving along to the right on this side, but you didn't put in a mixed cell reference, so it wouldn't know how to do that. So what it did instead was times C2 times this one. So it just kept going. It thought there was a, like a growing pattern instead of holding, right? It didn't know to hold because you didn't tell it to. So, and then it grew this way, and then it grew this way, because that's what it thought you wanted. So we're going to clear that and do it properly. So, so like I said, to get this, these results, you want to multiply 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 by 1 in the first column. This doesn't move, but these do. These will grow until 1,000, but you'd want to keep this the same. So there's a way to tell Excel to do that. So in this column, the red color right here, I actually want to hold this cell. I actually want to hold it. And the way to make it hold is press the F4 button or just put a dollar sign. You can put a dollar sign in there or just press F4. Now we don't want, yeah, we can hold that cell or which would work horizontally, but you have to do a bit of a, um, a mixed cell for this one. So what's actually happening is we're holding the row for this one. The row is going to stay constant. Uh, sorry, for this one, the column will stay constant. Let's say we want to copy to the whole uh, table. So the column in here is not going to move. The rows are when I go down, but the column isn't. So that tells me, press F4 again. So this is what we call an absolute cell reference, which we'll get to. So press F4 again, and we're going to hold the column. So whenever you have a dollar sign, it'll hold whatever is to the right of it. So if we have the absolute cell reference, it would hold both the column and the row. But a mixed cell reference will only hold one. This one would hold the row, row three. And we don't want to do that. We want to hold the column. So we hold the column by having the dollar sign before, right before A. And in this section, we're going along here. So what's you got to think what's changing, what's staying the same. The row is staying the same, but the column is changing. So for this one, press F4 and press F4 again, and that's actually the mixed cell reference we want. Because row two is staying the same, it could go on forever. And in this direction, column A is staying constant, so we're gonna hold both. So if you just change that formula, it's the same kind of uh, cell, 
references, but we are using a mixed reference so we can copy the formula into other cells and it can grow in that pattern. So let's try it. So we press enter. So again, if we've done it right, you should get this amount. Yep. So what happened was it grew here, but it stayed the same here. Now you can just copy the to complete the multiplication table and you've got your complete multiplication table. And what's nice is you could apply this formula, you could go on forever, like a thousand, and the formula would stay the same. It would still grow in the same way. So the way this multiplication grew is um, this cell would be, so if we went to this one, it grew this way and stayed here. All right, and this last one, it grew to five, and it went five, but it didn't, so in this tan uh, row here, it didn't change the row, it never will. And in this blue column, it'll change the row, but not the column. It'll never change. It'll go on for a thousand. Okay, so that's what that's how we use a mixed cell reference. Now, an absolute cell reference, we use this a lot when we're um, calculating taxes for different prices on, and then we add a tax at the end. So for different purchases, so an absolute cell reference will take this. So let's try it without the cell reference. Let's just do a normal cell reference and see what happens. So. We take this purchase, everything's fine. So we just times it by this number. And then we're gonna drag it down. Ah, what, why did it give me zero? Well, it gave you zero because it thought the pattern was growing down. So it thought there was gonna be a percentage here, which is nothing. So anything times nothing is nothing. So we're gonna clear that. We're gonna change it. So this is a little easier than the mixed cell reference absolute cell reference and normally sometimes when you have a multiplication of something it doesn't work out and um, this is probably why in Excel because you didn't do the absolute cell reference so we're going to make this the cell ref the cell reference for a2 we have to make this absolute so it doesn't change we're gonna lock it in so if it's holding the column and the row it's gonna lock this number in and we can copy this all the way down Okay, so just press enter like you did before. And now when we copy down, it's going to lock in this cell because it's an absolute cell reference. So see, it's the same one, same one, same one. And that's how you would use absolute cell references. And then you can just add these. To get the total. So normally when we have a percent like that, and it applies to all the purchases, we would use an absolute cell reference to this. Now, some people might think, well, can I just times this by 0 0.05 and then copy it down? You could, but the nice thing is, what if we change this amount? What if we went to, I don't know, increase next year by 3%, so now it's 8%. Okay, that's why we use the cell reference and we use the absolute cell reference in this case. So that is your relative absolute and mixed cell reference for review. So I hope that helps you save some time by using both mixed and absolute cell references. And I also hope that this tutorial brings you one step closer to becoming an Office Pro. If this is your first time watching videos on my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Subscribe for videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.